the, the second talk, uh, we're going to go ahead and start really quickly. Um, and, and just like before, the back end talks last about 25 minutes, and then we have five minutes to go, and you're free to uh, come in and come out to different talks as, as you please. So don't worry if people are coming in. Um, so next up, we have Nicole over here. Nicole, where are you from? Uh, from Manila, Philippines. And he's going to talk about sustaining a makerspace style R&D startup company. So please join me in welcoming him. Hello, uh, my name is Nicole, and I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Awesome um, We're basically a uh, science and engineering research and development uh, lab, and we stuff. So essentially, uh, we're a bunch of crazies. So we're scientists, engineers, uh, designers and all that who just you know love building things and stuff. Sometimes it may not be it may not have any uh, any cause or it may not have that may not have any purpose just for the fun of it. But sometimes also it's for uh, to change something or to improve something around us or to, to make a really uh, kick ass product. So essentially, uh, fundamentally, we are makers of the lab. Now, is anyone here? I'm, I'm sure most of you guys here are makers. So you've been building stuff uh, by yourself or with, uh, with people. And I guess from, from the years of making, there's something that's fundamentally satisfying when you build stuff, right? When you, when you see for the first time that what you're building works, that that feeling is you know, uh, it, it just oozes out of you. It's it's like I, I want to feel that again. It's addicting and all that. No matter what, whether I, whether it's gonna cost me. Sometimes you 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 fail to think about uh, how much it costs. You, know, you just want to start building that thing right away, right? There's that there's that uh, there's that addicting feeling. And but that's just you. For example, what if you're now surrounded with a group of people, like-minded people, like you? And now you start to come up with different ideas from everywhere. And with, uh, with, with people like that banding together, it may seem that it may seem hard to focus on what to make actually. Or if, if, you're, if you're making it for a living, where, where do we start first? I mean, we got all these crazy ideas around. Um, which one do, you, do we think would be uh, great to sustain us, right? So you have, you have this, chaotic group of people coming up with uh, different kinds of stuff and now we have to manage them and make some kind of uh, system that would allow you to sustain whatever you're doing whether it has to or not whether we just want to have fun or change the world and all that now we are some we are yes we are a, a an R&D company uh, we have we focus on engineering and, and science but we're not a traditional type of R&D company. Uh, big companies, for example, uh, because of their because of the bureaucratic system and you know the system is in place for so many years, they tend to silo talented individuals. What happens here is that it's hard to basically come up with stuff. Like for example, uh, hardware guys would just think of hardware, software guys would just think of software, and to group them together, uh, it might need some friction it, might, it would have uh, friction when you when you do that um, also if you're coming up with your own idea and you want to build it but don't but you don't have the necessary materials and equipment um, it's hard to ask for permission from the company to hey can I use this stuff for my own for my own um, purpose of, you know building my idea sometimes it is hard right? And um, yeah, so it's it, that that entails that it's you know the, the the person having this maker inside him or her. It's hard to pursue. It's, it's hard to pursue that uh, that personality. Um, so, given these questions, uh, how do we how do we in, in awesome lab? How do we then uh, continue or sustain whatever we're doing? Like for example, if we just you know, it's uh, a few months ago we came up with this idea of just building uh, light glowing shoes. Uh, it's similar to Tron for just no reason. Uh, we spent like a couple of 
thousand passes and prototyping them, but you know it was satisfying for us. And wow, we made something like Tron and all that. So very cool. Yeah. So we needed a way to sustain this this mechanism of we're gonna be burning cash to make cool stuff, but we have to replenish that cash, and we have to have some kind of uh, yeah cash replenishment to for us to buy more uh, more tools, more components and all that to build more awesome stuff. And you have to you have to have that balance of building what you like and what you want and surviving, right? So we had an idea of what if we we, we dig down to the bottom of this, try to identify what would be applicable to our market, uh, to, the, to the country that we're operating in, and that, that's in the Philippines. So we came up with two models, basically. Capitalizing on our, um, capitalizing on our talents and uh, resources, uh, we, we first have the market to lab model, where we approach uh, clients, we approach organizations, people, and because we are a diverse a uh, group of talented individuals, um, it, we could come up with, you know, sorts of stuff that might help them, our clients, uh, solve their problems or come up with new ideas for them. So, process that we uh, that we market is like we I, we talk to the client and we identify uh, how can we come in or we try to dig in what their problems are in their organization or whether they're coming up with an, with an idea but they don't know how to implement it. And then we ideate, and then prototype, uh, we, we build, test out, and all that, and, and then we deploy. Now, an example of this, for example, is uh, Low, Low, uh, Low Philippines. It's a, it's a big marketing and advertising agency in the Philippines. Uh, talked to us, came to us, and they needed a way to basically help Unilever in, in the Philippines uh, promote uh, environmental consciousness and also help out the victims of Typhoon Haiyan in Tacloba. So we came up, because we have scientists on board and engineers, we came up with, hey, why, why don't we build a water filtration system for the people there? Because everything is everything was devastated. Uh, we, there, there are no more uh, structures around, even for even for the water supply and all. So they needed a way to conserve water. So this is a laundry water recycling system. The, the mothers there uh, washing their clothes, um, after they use the water, they, they just put it back in and then the, the system will filter the water and then what comes out is clean water that another batch of uh, people can then use for washing their clothes or, or whatever. And it's also connected to, uh, to a lot of other parts here where we sustain like um, growing plants using the same water. Uh, we employed some kind of uh, filtering system to you have a really clean water out of it. Um, also, another thing that we did was for uh, for a marketing agency in the Philippines. Um, this one for this is this is for uh, one of the telcos. Um, we have a bunch of software engineers on board that basically just want to make games. That's what they like. You know, they don't care about anything else, whether they make money or not. But they just want to make games. So we came up with why don't we make games for um, brands? So this is using uh, Kinect. And then as we build our, uh, as we built our reputation, our, cap our capabilities, uh, more clients came to us and asking us to implement solutions like that and all that. Mm -hmm. But. But then um, we're sorry. We're then doing this stuff for clients. What about our own ideas? How do we how do we continue on, on doing them? Right. So th this the the first half that I showed you is to keep us afloat and sustain us. The second half is the lab to market uh, model, where we come up with our own ideas. We prototype rapidly. Uh, we, we build whatever we want, whatever we whatever we think is uh, cool and has a and has a purpose, and then 
we, we build it, we prototype it, we, we prove first that it works, and then after proving that it works, we, uh, we go for initial traction, verifying whether a market would actually like this or not. And then if it does, then we find funders and angel investment, and then we spin it off. So this is where the, this is where we maximize the talents of uh, of our people, because then we are able to um, identify hard, the hardest problems that are around us and try to solve them. And this is what this is what we uh, pushes intelligent, talented people because it's gonna squeeze the brain out of them to come up with ideas. So an example is uh, one of our engineers working on um, computer vision. He he just likes building. Uh, he just likes putting vision on a machine, basically enabling a machine to see and all that. So he's built like uh, robots that can roam around and all that using open source uh, components. So, uh, and then one of our business guys came up with, hey, I think, uh, I think there's, a, there's an opportunity for, for us to develop for something for retail that can automatically count people in a retail environment. So we came up with a people counting device. The, <clears throat> that was developed by uh, by one of our engineers specializing in computer vision. So initially, we were prototyping all these things using already available hardware tools like uh, hardware components like the Raspberry Pi. We use the Raspberry Pi a lot um, because it's open source. You have a lot of open source uh, software and all that. And then we design our own circuits because we have internally we have our own. Um, uh, hardware engineers and embedded software engineers and all that. And this is the part where we were able to prove that what we're doing is actually valuable and has a, has a niche in the market. So we were able to get a initial list of clients. This one is for the um, <coughs> jewelry shops and for, for the for the luxury watches. They they found that you know what what we came up with is uh, something that would help them out and also capitalizing on the way that internet of things can now be easily integrated in um, in our products right now we provided them with a web interface that can basically show them real-time <laughs> data analytics right so because we also have some we have, some of our engineers are also into web designing because we could not just contain them to a specific role we don't want that we want we, we basically want to build like things uh, that, that we feel like building so one of our guys came up with yeah why, why don't we create why don't we why don't we put the internet things power here and so now it's connected real time to the internet now um, again also using the same tools uh, we have designers who uh, who now collaborate with engineers, they form their own team, we don't restrict them in silos, and they come up with really good designs. Uh, for example, this one, and this one was prototyped using 3D printers. Um, apart from that, uh, another one, one of our guys also, because uh, he, he got excited about making or building on top of what our other engineers are doing, uh, um, they, uh, one of our engineers uh, partnered with a designer and came up with um, what if we could track uh, people and understand their behavior in supermarkets. So this one is, uh, I can't really say the name uh, because it's, uh, I can't disclose it right now, but it's composed of uh, uh, a collection of sensors, multiple sensors, and they're all linked together and they can analyze how, you know, uh, how a consumer buys products in, in the supermarket. So. All of these things, because uh, because we have the freedom uh, to to build stuff, um, there's a sense of satisfaction in, in making in in in, in uh, validating that what we're making actually has a purpose in out there and all that. So again, uh, the the model what we that we derived here was from the first model, the, the market to lab. Uh, we, we service for our clients, uh, we, we, we come up with solutions that already existing organizations out there might need. And the profit there, of course, it goes to the lab overhead expenses to keep us running and have a space. And at the same time, a big chunk of that will be 
funnel to uh, funding those lab to market projects that uh, those projects that we come that we come up internally and you know hope that it would fly and all that and then once once for example we validated and proved that this is something investment worthy uh, once investment comes in we spin it off to another company and the profit share from that goes back to funding those projects uh, those, those, those projects that basically had an inspiration from, from making uh, the, so there uh, and it is a challenging model because uh, why you're going to be burning a lot of cash um, yeah, you're going to be burning a lot of cash it's also hard to manage a group of crazy makers all around and focus them on hey guys we need to do we need to do this we need to keep afloat so we need to do this for a client but also they they wanted to do their own their own stuff and all that but um, and if uh, we somehow had a couple of difficulties uh, managing that but fundamentally we always go back to uh, to the question of why are we making right because we, we want to we want to feel that same feeling that we felt when we first uh, saw what we're making working right so we, we go back to that and you know just uh just spread and sustain the, the spirit of making and in, in, in the group and always try to find the balance between uh, keeping afloat and continuing to do what you love to do so um and th this model we we're not saying that this is a per that, that this is a perfect model, but we really believe that um, we could spread the the maker religion from this. So, um, one of the things that we're doing is uh, we we came up with this mobile maker lab uh, in partnership with the Mind Museum in the Philippines, where you you, know, you you have this uh, you have this set of tools and equipment that can go that can roam around. Um, for example, in an unprivileged areas, and you know, teach kids uh, to build stuff. Well, that we're also, well, luckily, uh, Apple Dia, one of the members of Black IP, saw us and you know got interested in our model and decided to invest in us and partner with us. So, in a few months' time, we'll be setting up uh, our own maker space because the Awesome Lab, the company, is private and we could not open our doors to the public but we really wanted to and we really wanted to extend ourselves to everyone so we're putting this up in a few months and the model will be awesome lab we're going to be providing mentorship because we are again there's a there's a there's a very good diversity of talents in awesome lab we provide mentorship to anyone a maker like us you know they come into the space hey i got this great idea but i don't know what to do about it i don't know where to start so that's where we come in. Um, we we guide them through product development, through technology development, how to scale your business up if if ever there's potential in it. And then we work on the idea, that guy prototypes that idea, and then we somehow support it. And if we see there's value in it, we invest in it. And that becomes part of that whole system that I showed a while ago in sustaining this cycle of, of making. So so there, I guess um, that's our way of uh, that's our way of spreading the maker religion and um, getting everyone infected with that addicting feeling of seeing something works. Thank you. So we have a bit of time. So anyone have any questions for Nico? Uh, yeah, I'm seeing the maker space that you just yeah shows the just now. No, uh, you selling these? No, no, I mean, yeah, that one. Before. The mobile one. The mobile one. Oh, the mobile one. Yeah. that? Um, actually, we designed it in partnership with the museum in the, in the Philippines. Oh. And the, 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 the goal, actually, of Awesome Lab and, uh, and my museum was to teach uh, kids all around the country, especially the underprivileged ones. So, with regards to selling <laughs> it, um, I think, uh, there are plans of open sourcing the, the project so that you know everyone, anyone actually can can get the blueprint, uh, can get the design and start building.
their own uh, mobile maker. So, so you're not selling this one? Um, that one hasn't come up in the, in the talks yet, but well, what really is the intention for this one is to spread the, the maker spirit and promoting maker, the maker movement. Very nice. <laughs> okay, thank you, Nico. Thank you.